I actually got to play the bazaar. And for those of you that don't want to wait for an entire video to hear the verdict, yes, it is incredible. It does live up to the hype we gave it. And before you click off and move away to something else, yes, I will be live streaming the launch of the bazaar on October 30th over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash RTFCR. More information about that later, links down in the description. You should know. I'm a bit of a legend on Pelago. Hello, I'm Artificer or Greg, and yes, I did get to play the game we are all waiting for. I'm very, very thankful to Tempo for letting me have a little sneak preview uh, before the game goes live on October 30th. And yes, it is amazing. I want to quickly go over my top five things that I want people to be aware of and look out for before we head into the game itself. I want you guys to understand there is an NDA of sorts in place, so I'm not going to be able to answer all of your comments, but please do leave them, and if I can answer them, I will. Uh, these, these are just my sort of general things that I think you really should keep an eye out for when the game goes live on October 30th. The biggest thing of all, and my number one thing for you to look out for, is actually pretty unnoticeable. Um, it, it's going to become apparent. You're going to sort of subconsciously know that this is happening, but you might not pay too much close attention to it, and that is the async format. It's a format that we've all become a little aware of recently. Um, things like backpack battles, super auto pets, uh, and a bunch more have been charging out of the gates uh, as soon as this concept was uh, was made public. So we've all had a chance to play these sorts of things before, um, but never this polished. I'm sure you all understand that super auto pets, backpack paddles, sure, it's great. You can play part of a round and walk away. You know, when you're choosing what items you want, there isn't a ticking time bomb in the background of like, oh, if like I only have eight seconds to make all these little micro mini decisions, kind of like you have in TFT, right? In TFT or other auto traditional auto battlers, you have minute seconds, it feels like, to make make a bunch of decisions, like take in all the information, and then your APM has to be crazy. You have to be able to click all of the things all at the same time. We're a bunch of strategy nerd gamers, like, right, I'm, I'm not out here with a super high APM. Yes, I play Dota, I'm not very good at it. Uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm not an APM god. Um, so for me, having that chance to stop and think about your decisions in, in backpack battles, in super auto pets, and the bazaar is fantastic. But like I say, we've never played a such a polished game like the bazaar. So, here's... A little sneak peek is to a, a later point. With backpack battles and super auto pets, I never felt the urge. Or, well, urge is the wrong word. With super auto pets and backpack battles, I never felt the need to step away from it because it didn't keep me sort of constantly playing all the time, right? The bazaar is so good that you won't want to step away from it. So when an emergency comes up, or when you realize you had an appointment that you were supposed to leave home for, you know, five minutes ago, you can immediately stop there and then. You can shut your computer down, come back to it later, and your build is right where you left off. Now, in practice, how often did I walk away from the game? Extremely little. I finished most of my runs there and then, but it is fantastic to have the option to step away and return to it at your own leisure. But that is just one half of the benefits we get from async. Uh, and yes, I did get too warm talking about the bazaar. It's that good. Uh, no. <laughs> um, the other benefit we get is that you have time to think. Now, I, I breezed over that a second ago, right? Time to think. Sure, whatever. Fantastic. You think, oh, great. Artificer just cannot think quickly enough about his strategies. Therefore, he needs an async game to be remotely good at the game, right? While that may, might be true to some extent, uh, what it really allows you to do is really think about every single option. While you are, while you might be charging through a TFT game, you might be like, okay, I need, I know what I need. I need this and this unit and this unit and I need this synergy and then go, 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 right? In the bazaar, you might also be thinking, okay, I need this for this synergy, this for that synergy, go, 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 go. You can still play on autopilot, but the times where you stop and go, Actually, isn't that really broken for my build if I just tweak like this and do that? Those moments are phenomenal. The only thing they I can really relate them to are board games, right? In board games or cards, traditional card games, especially when you're like building decks and stuff, you have that 
you know, enormous amount of time to really think about your decisions and go, actually, <laughs> I've stumbled across something unspeakably good here. Uh, and that high you hit from pulling it off, yeah, that is something that Bazaar can replicate, uh, replicate uh, and is truly a piece of it living up to what Reynad wanted in being the first digital deck building game. It might not be a deck building game anymore, we don't have decks, but it has that same feeling that I can't find anywhere else. Okay, on to number two, and man, uh, this could have easily been one, number one, this could easily be number five, this could easily have dropped off the list. Everything about this game is fantastic, but please, I beg you, play with the sound on, listen to the voice acting. The polish in this game is incredible, the voice acting is phenomenal, like chef's kiss to whoever wrote all those voice lines, all the voice actors from it. I, I, I'm a bit of a voice actor nerd. I like my voice actors, right? You know, I play video games all the time. I didn't recognize any particular voice actors going through it. It's not like they've gone to like, you know, LA to be like, okay, we're recruiting the top 10 highest grossing voice actors in the world, right? They've just, they've really done their homework and found voices that can make the bazaar feel alive. And that's the point I really want to make here is while some of the voice lines might be a little bit over the top, I'm looking at you, Kina. Uh, it really does help immerse you in the world with such a vibrant cast of voice acting to go along with the vibrant cast of characters, right? We literally have like four armed purple, purple chefs speaking with, you know, giant pig merchants. And that's just the, that's just the, the hero characters, which I will also say hero character voice lines. There are so many of them and they are fantastic. That's why we use one of them as our channel intro, right? You should know, I'm a bit of a legend on Pelago. Which, that's not an NDA break if anyone's concerned. That was released in an official Bazaar video ages ago. Um, but yeah, the voice acting is phenomenal. Kina is definitely up there as one of my favorites. Less so for the immersion, more so because, man, she really went for it. Whoever that voice actress was, they put her in a booth, said, hey, this character is a little bit over the top, and she went, oh, you want, like, 1,000%? Sure, let's go. Uh, <laughs> how high do you want me to jump? Um, but yeah, Kina is fantastic. Um, Pig and Vanessa, as I say, both brilliant as well. Dooley, it's beeps and boops, but the beeps and boops are kind of cool. Uh, that's all you're really going to get from him, I'm afraid. Uh, but there are some interesting uh, Dooley allies out there who do speak and give a little bit of lore. That's another thing. This game has lore. Is there lore in your other async auto battlers? Uh, no, I just, and this might be the, the real point too that I want to make, is just the polish, right? Voice acting is a small part of it, but it they use voice acting to tell off the lore, right? It, the Pygmalion references Jabalia, which is where he's from, or that he's Jabalian. Vanessa references that she's a legend in Palago, right? These are places in the bazaar that has this world built around it, that all of this groundwork has been laid to make this world feel more alive and feel more polished. Crip said it himself in his recent video, the bazaar feels more polished than Hearthstone. The bazaar feels more polished than peak blizzard. Right? Okay. <laughs> now, he might be having some, some roast into glasses. He might enjoy the game an awful lot. Uh, he might be one of the only people that has played it more than I have outside of tempo. Uh, that guy adores the game. I can promise you that much. Um... But he's onto something there. Like, this game has an incredible level of polish that has not been seen in this genre before. It will shake you and make you realize how much you actually can enjoy this type of game, right? Think about all the people who these days would say they really enjoy hero shooter, like hero, like class based hero shooters, right? How many people would still be saying that? had Overwatch 1 not existed, right? When all you had was TF2, which a lot of people enjoyed TF2, but not to the degree that they enjoyed Overwatch, not to the point where it became like their main sort of hobby was just playing Overwatch. There are many, many people I know in the gaming world, the only game they played for that period of like their life was Overwatch. Um, I feel like the Bazaar can definitely do the same thing for Async Auto Battlers. My third point is just how this game came together. This is a 
strategy game, a card game effectively, even though there aren't cards in the game, they're items, but let's hear me out. This is a card game developed by card game players. That might sound simple, but you would be astonished as to how many studios are out there that aren't particularly interested in the games they're making, right? Uh, <laughs> there are definitely <laughs> upper management in those companies that do not give a shit about their game. Uh, the Bazaar is exceptionally different in that regard because Reynad adores the Bazaar. He basically built the game that he always wanted as a very enthusiastic card game player, right? This guy wasn't just fantastic at Hearthstone, he also spent a great deal of time playing Magic the Gathering. He is ingrained in the card game world. This is the game that he desperately wanted. And while it might not be the game you desperately wanted, it was at least made by a card game player and that really, really shows in a number of ways. RNG is probably the most obvious of ways. This game is has so much RNG baked into it so that metas won't develop, right? Reynard spoke about this many, many times publicly. He wants to build the game so that you can't just attach a bot to it that tells you what the best card to pick every time is, right? That metas cannot necessarily develop where you're constantly going for, you know, dragons or whatever, you know? He wants to build a game that is has so much RNG in it that you cannot force a build. You cannot force a meta. But he also wants a game where you don't get screwed by RNG. Because that's what Hearthstone was, right? That's what a lot of card games are, a lot of strategy games are, that have that level of diversity, that level of variance. They achieve it through RNG across the board. The Bazaar has such a small, a tiny amount of bad RNG, right? The RNG is when you load into a new hour, you get three choices of an event to do, right? There'll be a random item type thing on the right hand side, there'll be some sort of crazy event in the middle, and there'll be some sort of merchant on the left selling you stuff, right? That's a lot of RNG. There are so many each of each of those types of things that could appear that you're never going to be able to force the same one to appear. You know, if there is a meta if there is a meta item, like a one item that is above and beyond the rest, incredibly strong, but you need to go to this merchant to find it, you're not finding that merchant when you need them, like 90% of the time. Instead, you get shown a different merchant. Okay, well, maybe that merchant doesn't sell exactly that item, but maybe it sells something close to that item. So I'll go to that merchant, right? And it might not give you exactly that item that you're after, right? You go to that merchant, it shows you a bunch of options. Yeah, I think three new items to choose from. Now, okay, well, I didn't get the three I want. In fact, all three of these are bad for me. Well, there's a reroll option. Okay, there's reroll options in lots of these games. You reroll, you get shown three more, but you're only allowed one reroll. Okay, so I get three more options. One of these items is like what I needed. You know, one of these items fits well into my build. It's not that OP item that I saw on that one crypt video, but it's actually, you know, it sounds like it does something similar. So I'll, I'll go with that actually. And because you're working with your build and not just relying on top decking the right card, because you're trying to build synergies, that RNG feels really good. You found items that cohesively made a build because you weren't trying to just replicate what you saw in that one crypt video, you know? Because you can't really replicate. There is too much RNG to replicate things. What I'm trying to say is, so long as you play the bazaar with, and you're not trying to force builds, which Crypt himself has said on his recent video, he tried as probably one of the top three, four, five bazaar players at the moment. He tried to force a build and got the worst win rates he achieved across the, his entire time playing the Bazaar. So long as you aren't trying to force a build, and you're trying to play the Bazaar properly, you're trying to just build synergies based on what you find, the RNG will feel fantastic. Because it will always give you things that kind of synergize with your build, so long as you're picking the right choices. But that's player choice. And then sometimes it'll give you the perfect item. Sometimes you will hit that item that Crypt showed off. Or that I showed off. Let's be real. When that happens, that feels very, very, very good. When that doesn't happen, it still, still feels pretty good, 
because you're in control of what, what events you're going to. Look, I think I'm going round and round in circles here. Me, I, all I'm trying to say is the RNG feels very good, despite there being tons of it. And point number four is kind of what I was getting into just there. There are crazy highs and virtually no lows in this game. Uh, you can hit some giga dopamine highs. Again, I keep referencing the crypt video uh, because that's the most you guys know at the moment. But in that video, he, he suggested that if you're playing Pygmalion and let's say you find a, a stell item, right? An unrele currently unreleased hero that has some items in the game. If you find some stell items, which you can if you're very lucky, then your build can become devastating, right? And then you can play that build for 10 days and you can have an, a very, very, very fun period of time or 10 wins. You can have a very fun period of time winning with that incredibly strong build. And then because of the ghost system, on the flip side of that, you might be like, okay, well, if there are people running around with like crazy OP builds, isn't matchmaking just going to be horrendous? Well, no. In that video, he also explains that when you match up against someone, so say, you know, I am a day five Pygmalion uh, and Crip has a day five Vanessa build where he found like a bunch of items from Dooley and Jules and Mac and or he found like the best Vanessa item, right? And just high rolled everything. I go up against that build, I lose horrendously. Doesn't matter how badly I lose, I'm gonna, I'm just, I mean, I lose the same amount of health equal to the day. Um, so like, sure, I lose. Oh no, I, I lose some of my prestige, right? My life. But no one has to face that build ever again, right? As soon as I faced it, that build is out of the pool. No one's fighting that build anymore. So I had a very, very brief encounter that I'm not going to remember because that was just a fleeting experience, right? I'm not going to remember that fight. But the crit in this example, who's on a giga run, he's going to remember that build for a long time because that build was insane and he played it for at least 10 wins. So there are crazy, crazy highs and virtually no lows. Another thing he got into in his video is that you can go zero wins and still have a good time. And here's why. Because even if you do go zero wins, in the middle of every day, there is a PvE fight. So you fight against a, an NPC build. Because of the way the bazaar is set up, this sort of ghost async auto battler thing, your battle against the NPC, physically, as in like what you see, looks no different. It is still your items, your build, coming together, doing its shit against an opponent. And that small little hit of dopamine, dopamine you get, watching your build come together to defeat a thing, massively outweighs the fact that you had zero wins and you just lost every PvP encounter. Because you got those small dopamine hits anyway from beating PvE encounters, which is something that, by the way, Brainerd spoke about this a very long time ago. There's a video back on the channel that, where we, we watch his update on this talking about why they included PvE fights in the first place, and he was so right. Because you do get that little hit of excitement every time you beat an NPC that helps build up over the course of your run. So even if you have a shit run, you still had a good time. And that's just when it comes to the fighting, right? One out of, what is it, six or seven? However many ticks there are, like, th things there are on that clock, only one out of all of those things is a PvP fight. So let's say at a maximum, one sixth of your time is fighting in PvP. The other five sixths of your time, you're going to encounters. You're having a good time. You're buying things. You're moving, you're upgrading your build. You know, you're getting all of the exciting like sound effects and flashy effects that give you that dopamine rush that you're, you're progressing. And that all creates a positive feeling, a positive environment. So that even if you go zero wins and just completely burn out, uh, a bomb out of the game, you still felt like you had a good time and you still click play again. And that goes into my next point. The bazaar suffers from a deadly problem. The one more run problem. It is a serious problem. It's affected us all over the uh, in the past. You only have half an hour before you've got to go to that meeting. But I just want one more run of this game I'm really enjoying right now. Just one more run. 
That was a rough run. I didn't get everything I wanted. Just one more run and I'll get it next time. The just one more run is something that I've experienced in the past in other games, sure. Fleeting as it was, the bazaar <laughs> really suffers from this. Man, I did not want to stop clicking play next. Even though I was trying to record stuff, even though I was trying to gather information, I just wanted to click play and just play the game, right? It was, <laughs> it was so hard to step away from it. The point I mentioned earlier, where the fact that it's async means that you can click play, be halfway through a build, and then step away from it if you need to, right? I got a lot of games in, in the short window of time that I got to play the game. And in only one of those, did I turn the game off and return to it later. In every single other one, I made as many excuses as I possibly could to extend my playing time just a little bit, just to finish the run. Because I just wanted to keep going. And then even when I did finish the run, I'd be like, mm, do I have enough time for another one? Ooh, sure, I have enough time. And then I'd try and play another one, right? Uh, I would just play like a really, really fast, like face rushy build uh, to try and like get through 10 wins really quickly. Anyway, this game really, really suffers from the one more run problem. You really wanna just keep playing next. And here's a little bit of story time for me. While I love that in the bazaar, this is not necessarily something that always afflicts me, and this is definitely not a rose-tinted glasses thing. Story time. For those of you that don't know, the name Artificer came from the fact that I used to run a channel called The Artificer's Guild, which was like the main... I mean, we did the same thing as we're doing with The Bazaar, but with Artifact, Valve's card game. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I am a Dota player. I love Dota. Uh, sorry, League fans. I also play League, though. Don't worry. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of those, like... Team red or blue. Um, point being, massive fan. I really wanted Artifact to succeed. In the build up to it, I it was nothing but hype. I was like, yes, this looks amazing. That looks amazing. That looks amazing. I'm not a game developer. I can't. Like, I I'm also not a, a game designer. I can't tell what necessarily is going to make for a good game until I play it. As soon as I got my hands on Artifact, bearing in mind I was a content creator with like 10,000 subs or whatever. Bearing in mind that, you know, it was kind of like a job to me at that point. And a very, a job that I've been looking at, looking for for a long time. Something I've been working towards for a long time. There was a feeling in the pit of my stomach every time I finished a game and I knew I needed to click next. I just didn't want to go again. Because it just felt bad. The game just didn't feel very good, and despite being incredibly invested in it, and really, really needing that game to succeed, I just couldn't click next. And that is the complete inverse in the bazaar. I can't stop myself clicking next, and now that I don't have access to the game, I don't know what to do with my life. And there are lots of reasons for this. Uh, Crip mentioned that when you start as at least Pygmalion or Vanessa, even as Dooley, you get shown a bunch of sort of new starter items. It's kind of got that um, that sort of like new RPG feel every time you, you know, every time you go back to Skyrim. Who has ever loaded an old Skyrim save? No. You create new, you make a new character, you hear the, oh, you're finally awake line, uh, and you're playing in a new run. You want to know, oh, how am I going to start? You're always going to play Sneak Assassin, but you don't know how you, <laughs> you don't know how you're going to get there. The Bazaar is a little bit different way. You don't know what you're going to end up playing. Um, so every time you start a new run, new run, you get that new run feeling. It's like, oh, what item am I going to, what am I, item am I going to get to start with? What direction is my build going to take me? Because I say you can't really force a build. So every time you click new, it's like that rush of excitement of like, oh, am I going to get something I really enjoy playing with? Like if I'm playing Vanessa, my fingers are crossed. Like just give me Lang Zhang. Just like I, I, I want a nice easy time. I want to enjoy a nice easy run. Just give me Lang Zhang. But no, it gives me cannon, and I get baited into a cannon build. And while it's really, really fun, I lose horrendously. <laughs> so it has that amazing new run feeling. And then when you've just finished a run, if it didn't go perfectly, or even if it did go perfectly, you also have that feeling of like, man, that could have been better if I'd just done that one thing differently. If I'd just gone to a different vendor, maybe if RNG had given me a different merchant or event, and I could have really popped off with that thing, you know? Oh, I finally got to experience playing with this item for the first time. And man, it was really fun. I really want to run it back. Like the first time I got Sniper Rifle, it was abysmal. 
But after playing Sniper Rifle for the first time, I was like, huh, I think I know how I want to run Sniper Rifle next time. Let's go again and see if I get it. Seven games later, I'm not even playing the right character anymore. I haven't seen Sniper Rifle once, but I'm still loving life. And last but not least, our bonus number six thing you should be looking out for at the release of uh, at least the Bizarre Beta is our live stream. <laughs> We're going to do a sort of live stream party for the drop of the beta over on twitch.tv slash rtfcr. Uh, links are all down below. We're going to be running maybe one to two hours just before the drop of the game. Uh, I'm running through for a good, you know, long duration stream. Uh, the focus of my streams throughout, throughout the opening week or weeks of the bazaar uh, is going to be very newcomer friendly. Um, you know, I've got a lot of hands-on experience now and we've been covering the bazaar for a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> so even the stuff that has changed repeatedly, you know, we have historical context for. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be running some beginner friendly streams. Come in, ask any questions that you've got. Uh, NDA will be fully dropped by that point, so I can tell you everything you want to know. Um, so yeah, twitch.tv slash artificer, or RTFCR, because artificer is taken, uh, <laughs> for those beginner-friendly uh, bizarre streams. I'll see you over there a couple of hours before. We'll be drop watching some old bizarre content before the, the actual drop. Uh, and then if we go late enough, it's actually my birthday the day after. Couldn't have asked for a better birthday gift. I'll see you over there in the live streams or in the next video.